G'day, my name's Keegan, and today we're going to do a quick introduction into what it's like to have a John Deere Seed Terminator. The Seed Terminator's got a pretty intricate monitoring system with a little screen that's up in the cabin. It'll tell you your mill speeds, your bearing and gearbox temperatures, it has a vibration alarm and a blockage alarm. So basically anything that's going on back here that you can't physically see, you can actually see on the little monitor yourself. So you can have full confidence in knowing that what's going on on the monitor is actually what's happening behind your header. So each day we have a, a daily checklist to go over your machine. So first of all, we want to um, keep on daily hygiene. We want to make sure there's no debris or material going through um, sitting on the machine. So make sure you, you blow the machine down every day. Uh, we want to inspect the oil in the gearbox to make sure it's up to level and clean. And we want to check the belts and the tension uh, and make sure they're in good condition and correctly tensioned. When you put a seed terminator or any form of harvest weed seed control onto the back of your header, there's a lot of considerations to take into account. It's a widely thought step for people to put a mill on the back of their header and all of a sudden harvest quite a lot lower to the ground. But actually ingesting so much straw through your separator is quite a big capacity drain on the machine before you even put a mill on and it's just something that you need to consider before you go along and, and look at any form of harvest weed seed control. Mills are also quite a, an expensive way to kill your weeds in terms of capacity and fuel. Uh, we're putting on a machine that's spinning at 3000 RPM uh, that's designed to kill 99% of ryegrass seeds. So unfortunately you can't kill weeds for free and it's really important to, to make sure that you help set your harvester up to get a desired outcome that will really help your farming system for the future. There's a lot of different uh, crop conditions and variables to account for when you're running your mill and not all of them are optimised for harvest weed seed control. Uh, for example, harvesting frosted crop is quite difficult on the harvester and really stalls your capacity. And then also trying to process all that material through your seed terminator again uh, can be quite a large drain on your horsepower. It's quite often beneficial in those situations to, to maybe bypass the mill if, if it suits your cropping program. Other conditions where running a mill isn't optimal is things that are quite green and ropey and difficult to get good separation of the straw out through your chopper. We really want to ensure that all your straw is going through your chopper and that we're only getting the chaff and the weed seed fraction going through the seed terminator mill. Our mill will run at 25 kilowatts running empty and every other bit of power that we draw is directly based on how much material you put through the machine. So the more chaff and the more straw you put through the machine directly impacts how much power you're going to lose from your harvester. Wear is very condition dependent and also dependent on the types of crops you're harvesting. Uh, we get quite a lot of machines in very sandy, abrasive soil where, where wear is quite rapid, opposed to places with dark, chocolatey loam soils. Uh, they seem to run multiple years with minimal signs of wear. We benchmark our screens at 500 hours and our rotors and flails at 1,000 separation hours. Uh, this is a, a rough gauge across the country with all crop conditions included. Uh, but if you were to harvest, say, 300 hours of just lentils in an extremely coarse, abrasive, sandy country, you would expect more aggressive wear than that 500 hours. And alternatively, if you're only harvesting cereals down in the Western District, uh, you, would, you would see quite a lot less wear. You might, might double the amount of hours you'll get out of your mills. So it's very dependent on where you are. If you don't want to run the seed terminator, you've got a couple of options. First of all, you can simply bypass it by pulling the chopper back a few hundred mil, folding down the bypass door in underneath the grain loss tray and tucking it back in. That way, all of the material off the cleaning shoe, instead of flowing down into the mill, will then flow into your chopper and get spread with the residue as it normally would have before a seed terminator. 
There are quite a lot of instances where people choose to not run their seed terminator. You might have a very clean paddock with no weeds that you're targeting in that block. So to save on, on fuel and other added costs, wear costs through the mill, you might decide to bypass. Uh, sometimes in extremely wet and ropey conditions where the material is quite hard to, and difficult to harvest by itself, let alone terminate the weeds. So you might want to bypass the mill in that instance or potentially use something like our lower kill range mills where you can process more green material. How you set your harvester up has a pretty big impact on what happens at the back end of the header. Every little inefficiency that you go through, through the whole system, amplifies by the time the material gets to the seed terminator. So what we're looking at is making sure that we're not over-processing all of the material. Once you start to damage that straw flow, you can never undamage it. It's quite hard to keep the straw off your cleaning shoe and out of the mill. We're essentially using a hammer to smash material through the size of a hole of a 50 cent coin. And you can imagine putting long bits of straw through that machine is gonna take quite a lot of power to do. So minimizing that material off your cleaning shoe is not only saving you power through your harvester, but it's also saving you power on running your mill, it's saving you fuel, and it's increasing your capacity. So optimizing your header for harvest weed seed control is important.